here at the barn which is this really really cool music venue I've never checked it out yet but my buddy Chris um, has been working on it for the better part of I think at least a year or two and um, so we're gonna go check it out Crazy, right? It, this looks phenomenal. Like, have you ever played in a place so cool? Like, I, I said our slogan should be uh, the barn. We give a crap. <laughs> because that was like, because I kept saying that when yeah. people were asking me like, and I was always having trouble articulating it. And I just wanted to be like, you know, the deal is we just wanted to look like, you know, we give a crap. Like when right. you come in here, that we really cared about how it sounded to you. Because how many clubs have you played in? Oh, jeez. Where. Sound. The sound is awful, you know, and maybe the sound is great for three quarters of the people But what about that other 25% who are sitting right on top of the speaker or yeah, whatever? Exactly. So we wanted to like really think about it my buddy Chris and this is his place new place the barn you you've been basically a musician your entire life yep um, you've been on MTV yep won some things on MTV you've been on tour um, toured the world a bit forever. you know kind of coming back to the to the to the ground floor the grassroots hometown yeah. doing the this is yeah. kind of like this is just something that we always dreamed about doing, like kind of setting up a place where we could really focus on on making great music for, you know, small, intimate groups of people. I love it. Thank you so much for inviting us over for lunch just to talk shop, talk about being creative and, and uh, being a creative. You know, we've got you as a musician, uh, me in, into video, uh, another guy that's that's into video and communications and and uh, and Craig, that's that's into farming and straight just straight up farmer. You gotta just, have a farmer in the group. Absolutely, it's but key. everybody just trying to do their thing, you know, yeah. balance their family life and their work life. Um, but it's cool. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. When I pop this off, like the old velvet, like oh thing. yeah, I love that. And on the back, it says manufactured by A. F. Lawrence, Batavia, New York, eighteen ninety six. Are you kidding? Holy cow! Are you kidding? That was like cool. So it's like a, actually a local piece. And the other thing that I love about this is you can see the pastor's thumbprints. Are you kidding? You can see minute, if you really it. look at look right there. Can you, oh can you see yeah, that? yeah, absolutely. Of like where he rested used to, them the same the same, same spot, spot every, time. every time. Probably forty years. Oh I mean, isn't gosh, that awesome? I just that's crazy. love stuff that's like that. Great. Is that we want to be able to record everything that takes place on this stage right. in a live way. So we just got it to where we're feeding into here. This is just kind of where I do my writing and my whatever. So. Yeah. So you put so anything that that looks like pine over there. I it either I put or I did with someone like there was maybe two or three of us working. Wow. Yeah. So even and that's this every door ceilings, and... floor. The floor is the oh same my wood. Gosh. Is the same wood that's on the walls, it's just stained and poly, you know. So I made a little humidor for my guitars <laughs> with a humidifier. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's just a little balcony, you, get, you know, like back here. Where you're just get talking, out. Of out, course, my little... children leave an orange on the floor. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah, come so on. Cool. So we watched from up here. This is so cool. And people were like, ooh, they're special. I'm like, yeah. Like, uh, what, you bet, what is it? You bet we are. <laughs> Look at this. It's like a little VIP section balcony. I don't know how this place is unbelievable. I put these wow. stairs in so that I could sneak up to our living space from back here. Craig! So I'm here with uh, my buddy Craig, and um, Craig is the owner of Little Sprout Farms that is uh, in Rochester. 
and uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about Little Sprout Farms. Yeah, so um, you know we grow mushrooms. Uh, that's our main focus of the business. Grown shiitakes and oyster uh, lines, Maine, and uh, chestnut mushrooms. And uh, yeah, we also grow some microgreens and seasonal produce and get out and forage wild food and wild yeah. mushrooms and stuff. What are some of the restaurants in town that uh, you guys sell to? Uh, some of our main ones are uh, like the Cub Room, uh, Atlas Eats, uh, Good Luck, uh, Bronca, just to name a few. I was just at I was just at Good Luck. I had no idea that uh, you guys sold mushrooms there, and I totally didn't get the the mushroom dish. I think it oh, was you it was gnocchis. Yeah. It was the mushroom gnocchis, and Next I was gonna time. get them, um, but then I heard that they had this uh, cheeseburger that's like awful for you, and so I was like, I'll get that. It's a great burger though, isn't it? It was a very good burger. It was way too much. You're gonna transition to a brand new spot for your farm and and do a lot more um, social media, kind of following your journey a little bit over the yes. next little bit. So how can people kind of follow that? What's what's your social media that you that Yeah, so you definitely use? check us out on Instagram, Little Sprout Farms, and, uh, and like us on Facebook. And uh, we've been a little quiet lately, but because we got a lot of things we're figuring out. So, but you'll see us a lot more once we get a new spot lined up. Rocky said it's not sunshine on rainbows, even the best jobs. Mm -hmm. But the things that, you know, for, for us though, the things that we're passionate about, they're, they're fun, right? But there's so many different points of sacrifice, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I love that you were talking about how to balance that with your kids and everything. I, I, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's not easy. No, no, because first of all, you love them, right? But then you're like, can you just go away? Can you just so not I can be here just, right now? I really need to work on this. <laughs> For me, it's editing, but I can imagine you editing and also well, like, trying to be creative. I can't, it's I cannot so record a track in this house. <laughs> I mean, I probably should have been smart enough to isolate some rooms and stuff, but I'm not that smart. To my creativity? Yeah, to your creativity. What's what's the biggest issue that you're coming up against that's... Uh, this is for Chris? For yeah. anybody. I mean, we're all we're all creators that's here a, in yeah. different ways. That's a good question. Um, I think my honestly is is focus because what the thing is for me is that I've got all of these things happening at once and I have trouble compartmentalizing them and so I end up just kind of freezing on all of them. What what, what about you? Alex? I would great. I would say <laughs> the balance between spending time on stuff that I have to maintain versus blocking out time where oh, I can do yeah. something that adds on top of that. Some, Absolutely. Something new. Like the minutia, you know, you kind of bury yourself in that. And, and, you, and you and you some of these things you have to maintain. Like if I don't do, I do a video a week on my channel. But how do I do a video a week and then make also have time to make an online course that I can actually s start selling at some point? Right. That's, that's more than a video a week that I'm recording and editing, right. right? So how do I find that time? How do I not feel like I'm just on a treadmill? I don't want to yeah. create a bunch of treadmills for myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's the biggest. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is like mine and trying to balance that with yeah, the stuff you need to do, like spending time with your kids and your yeah. wife. And yeah, my mind is always too occupied with like information and ideas. And always needing like to get more. <laughs> This is my buddy Alex. He is the communications guru. Um, we, did we start YouTube about the same time? Uh, maybe I started two, almost two years ago. Okay, and I guess I was more like a year ago. Um, and all my hard work, I got I had like a, a good solid 80 subscribers. You got probably 80? I have 80, yeah. <laughs> How many subscribers do you have? Almost up to about 3,000. I'm super blessed that it went that way. You have 3,000 followers? 3, 000, so far. Cool. That's actually not that big compared to the big guys. Yeah, it's not that big. But I'm having fun. But I'm stupid. having fun. Um, but what, what's the name of your channel? Communication Coach. Communication Coach. Um, yeah, I've been I've been watching you for a while, man. You're killing it. You do a lot of great instructional videos on communication and leadership. Uh, so 
yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Well, it's thanks, pretty Mike. Awesome. I like your videos too. Thanks, you know, man. I always share them on my social thanks, media. Thanks, dude. Stop it. Look at this guy. I do. I do. I do. You do great work. I'm excited to uh, hang out and have some fun.